Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum length of string after operations. I'm a little bit late today, but this is a pretty easy one, conceptually at least. So the idea here is that we're given an input string and so we wanna run some simulation on it. Basically we can pick any character so this is a lowercase a, so we have to pick it such that there's at least one lowercase a on the left and on the right, like at some point, it doesn't have to be adjacent, but then we want to remove the nearest a on the left and the nearest a on the right, and so that's it. So basically, we have to choose an element that has at least three copies of it in the array, and that's kind of the only restriction, because when you think about it, if there's at least three a's, one of them is going to be the middle A, and that's the one that we wanna pick and we wanna remove the other two. And so we're trying to minimize the length of the remaining string, so we just wanna remove as much as we possibly can. So when you think about it in terms of that, it kind of becomes a state machine problem. If we have like just one count of the character, and that's what we're concerned with, the count of each character, the positions themselves do not matter for the reasons I talked about. So if we had a count with a character of just a single one. I don't think we have any examples, but imagine if we had like a Z in this string, we just have a single one. Well, then it stays the same. The count of it will never change. If we have a character with a count of two, once again, it's always gonna stay the same because we can't remove any characters from it. We need at least three characters to remove. And then the other state is when we have three characters. Well, we would remove two characters from there to move it back to state one with just a count of one. And if we had uh, four characters, well, then we could make it down to uh, two characters by removing two. And if we had uh, five, well, then we could go down to three and then down to one. So looking at it in terms of this, I could keep drawing it out, but basically either we'll have a one count for a given character, which will stay the same, or we'll have two, which will stay the same, or we'll have three, which will bring it all the way down to one, or we'll have four, which will bring it all the way down to two. Basically, if it's an even number, it'll go down to two. If it's an odd number, it will go down to one. So this way we can solve the problem in linear time. I think there is a way to do this with like a one pass solution, but it's easier to code it up doing a two pass, especially in Python, because we can just create a counter on the input string, which will pretty much count the occurrences of each character. And then solving the problem is just a matter of figuring out if a number is even. If it's even, then we'll add two to the result. If it's odd, we will add one to the result. Very briefly, I guess I'll draw it out. A has a count of three, I believe. B has a count of four. So we would just go through all of these counts. We'd see three, then we're gonna add a plus one for that. We see a four, we're gonna add a plus two. We see a two, we're gonna add a plus two for that. So we could get the output string to be of length five. Now let's code it up. So I'm gonna declare a variable for the result. That is what we're going to return. And then we're going to iterate over all the characters. But I'm actually gonna throw them into a counter, which is basically a hash map, which will give us the count and the uh, character. But we actually don't really care about the character itself. We just care about how many times that character occurred. So we can actually just go through the values of this. Alternatively, I think we could have used an array if we wanted to, but again, I'm just trying to do this the easiest way in terms of the implementation. So we will get a count in this, and then if that count was odd, in which case this would be one, we will add one to the result. Otherwise we will add two to the result. Technically the count of a character could be zero, but those wouldn't show up in this hash map anyway. So that's why we don't have to worry about checking that that count was actually like positive. But let me go ahead and run this and uh, you can see it works and it's pretty efficient. I'm guessing the one pass solution where we populate the hash map, I think at the same time would be probably the more efficient way to do this, at least slightly more efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Nico.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.